A young woman was murdered and found in the men's bathroom of this bar in the early morning hours. In 1991, there was a sexually motivated homicide that occurred at a bar. She was stabbed to death and there were bite marks, bite marks on her neck and her breasts. After a little bit more investigation, it, they determined there was a gentleman that frequented the bar named Ray Crone and they honed in on him. They did a bite mark comparison between his bite and the bite on her neck and breasts and determined that there was a, a match per the bite mark expert at that time. Two days after that crime occurred, Mr. Crone was arrested. What we do as a forensic scientist is analyze and evaluate physical evidence that comes in from crime scenes. In forensic science, there are different disciplines. Some of them are comparative and some of them are analytical. So bite mark evidence and fingerprint evidence are part of the comparative sciences, whereas DNA, forensic biology, screening, and controlled substances, those are analytical type sciences. So in this particular case, there was a comparative science utilized early on when this crime occurred in 1991, which is bite mark evidence. But the bite mark evidence is what convicted Ray Crone based on juror interviews. 92, he was convicted and put on death row. So in 1996, there was an appeal. There was new DNA evidence that was found. This DNA evidence was from an unknown contributor. However, even though this was delivered at the 96 trial, the jurors were still sold on that bite mark evidence and they were not convinced. The judge actually reduced from death to life in prison because he had a lingering doubt as to the true identity of the killer. At the end of 2001, there was a post-conviction relief court order that ended up in our office at the Phoenix Police Department Crime Lab. So in early 2002, I was involved in this case. And in March of 2002, I entered a DNA profile into our CODIS database. The CODIS database is the database that houses all convicted felons. Three days later, on March 8, 2002, a CODIS hit was given to me. I knew exactly where I was, exactly what I was doing as I was sitting in the chair in the DNA lab in front of the computer and the CODIS administrator, um, Allison Sadowski, walked up to me and said, Kelsey, you got a hit on your case. And I said, okay, what case? The Ray Crone case. I said, excuse me? And she said, and it's not Ray Crone. And you know, of course our eyes are huge and we're scrambling to, to get more information because we knew that someone was incarcerated from this for this crime. So here we have a new name. This gentleman that was now matching the DNA evidence in the case from the court order was a convicted child molester. Uh, come to find out that this gentleman was living roughly 500 yards from the bar and did frequent that bar. In April of 2002, Mr. Crone was released from prison. I met Ray Crone a couple years after he was released from prison. His life now is moving forward. Looking back is, is not worth it to him anymore. He has a full life ahead of him. We don't get moments where we actually get to meet someone either that's been involved. Those, those cases are the ones that really are memorable. I think forensic science is an integral part of solving crimes. Uh, the detectives lean on us for a, a large portion of what they do. They need us to fill pieces into their puzzle.